Let us pray. O God, you have taught us to keep all your commandments by loving you and our neighbor. Grant us the grace of your Holy Spirit that we may be devoted to you with our whole heart and united to one another with pure affection. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, forever and ever. Amen. The Holy Gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ according to Matthew. Jesus said, To what will I compare this generation? It is like children sitting in the marketplaces and calling to one another. We played the flute for you and you did not dance. We wailed and you did not mourn. For John came neither eating nor drinking and they say, He is a demon. The Son of Man came eating and drinking and they say, Look, a glutton and a drunkard, a friend of tax collectors and sinners. Yet wisdom is vindicated by her deeds. At that time, Jesus said, I thank you, Father, Lord of heaven and earth, because you have hidden these things from the wise and the intelligent and have revealed them to infants. Yes, Father, for such was your gracious will. All things have been handed over to me by my Father, and no one knows the Son except the Father, and no one knows the Father except the Son and anyone to whom the Son chooses to reveal him. Come to me, all you that are weary and are carrying heavy burdens, and I will give you rest. Take my yoke upon you and learn from me, for I am gentle and humble in heart, and you will find rest for your souls. For my yoke is easy and my burden is light. The Gospel of the Lord. May the words of my mouth and the meditations of our hearts be always acceptable in your sight, O Lord, our strength and our Redeemer. Amen. In the 1940s and 50s, Quaker Oats hired a number of black women to portray Aunt Jemima for their pancake brand. The original Aunt Jemima character was portrayed by a former slave, Nancy Green, and she represented the brand at the 1893 World's Fair receiving an award for her performances and creating lots of buzz. The not-so-recent but newly activated controversy over the stereotyped black servant woman has brought a number of stories to light. I will leave the controversy for others to argue and litigate, but what captured my interest was an interview I heard on the radio with Michelle Norris, a former NPR reporter whose grandmother named Ione Brown was a member of the Quaker Oats Pancake Promotional Sales Force that covered a territory of the upper Midwestern United States just after World War II. Norris never learned of her grandmother's work until more recently, but she has been able to do research and find archival, archival records and find some recordings of her grandmother on the road promoting the Aunt Jemima brand. What she discovered is that a whole cast of black women were trained to play the character. They were costumed as domestic servants, taught the old slave patois that Nancy Green affected for her performances. And then they were sent out to fairs and solo appearances to do demonstrations for housewives on this modern convenience of having a pre-prepared mix for pancakes. The Quaker Oats Company paid them well and covered all of their expenses but insisted that they remain in character in public. Apparently, Irony Brown played the game, but not necessarily following all the rules when out of sight from corporate management. She was alone on the road. At the time, there were few, if any, hotels or boarding houses that would house blacks. Therefore, she had to stay in local black families' homes. In some communities, there were no black people at all, and she had to leave town to find a place to stay for the night. During the day, Ms. Brown played her role. She sang gospel songs and made pancakes. But in the evening, she welcomed groups of young black women, reciting poetry, reading to them, encouraging their education, and urging them to seek new and empowered roles in their changing society. In an interview, Ms. Brown's granddaughter says that she understands why her grandmother did not tell her about her job with Quaker Oats. 
She talks about the pain of being second-class citizens and the grace of not wanting to wallow in that pain of the past for the children of the future. And then she says this. We're seeing a kind of activism in the streets right now where people are taking to the streets and demanding rights and demanding that this country live up to its promise. But sometimes activism takes on a quieter tone. Sometimes activism rolls into a small town and shows the people of that town what black elegance and black eloquence and black success can sound like and look like, even when they're not expecting that. This is such a beautiful articulation of the power, gentleness, and love can command. While there are systemic tensions and needed collaborations and worthy arguments, the Anjumima, that Anjumima story tells of a faithfulness, a gentleness, a hope for humanity, of being a peacemaker and a peace bringer and a world changer. The Bible is loaded with stories of folks like Ms. Brown who would not go along just to get along. The Pharaoh's daughter would not kill Moses even though he was a Hebrew baby and that was the order. Queen Esther prevailed on her husband, the king, to avert a mass killing of the Jews. Even Mary and Joseph risked public scorn and humiliation in living out and telling the story of their divinely conceived son come to save all people. These are the stories that fueled and inspired the work of the Underground Railroad, the Nazi resistance movement, and the struggle for human civil rights just 70 years ago in this country. When we come to today's gospel, we meet Jesus as he talks about the fickleness of the world and its favoritism of one group, one party, or another. Jesus says they criticized John the Baptist for being too strange and aloof. And then they criticize him for being too available and too welcoming. He goes, goes on to say, but wisdom is vindicated by her deeds. Actions speak louder than words. And then he closes what, with what we have come to call the comfortable words, inviting people to come to him. Come to me, all you that are weary and carrying heavy burdens, and I will give you rest. Take my yoke upon you and learn from me. For I am gentle and humble in heart and you will find rest for your souls. For my yoke is easy and my burden is light. The Wall Street Journal reported this week that Americans are more anxious and basically angrier than ever. I'm not sure how they measure that, but it does seem pretty obvious. There are many legitimate fears at play. But in the end, Jesus reminds us that his love for us keeps things simpler and plainer than we make them through our grandiose machinations and our perceptions of power and influence. When I consider the great struggles and aches for change and growth, I return to the echo of a U2 song, When Love Comes to Town. I won't sing it for you, but I do pray it that when love comes to town, to our town, to our hearts, to our simple, basic, and daily actions, life will change. In the end, Ms. Brown made some money and brought love to town. Working with what she had, even though she found the role of Aunt Jemima demeaning and ignorantly stereotypical. But in our mind's eye, can we imagine we must imagine what it must have been like for young women of color to find encouragement and grace and love as she went about her subversive work for their good. We may never know of the seeds that she planted, but she labored long to birth a new image with a new voice of empowerment. In his subversive work, Jesus invites us to let go, to put down the anger, the frustration and the hatred that weighs heavily on human hearts and brings us down. Instead, he asks us to take on the mantle of love, to, perfect, to practice forgiveness, which is everything, and to allow Jesus to be our savior. There are all kinds of activism, 
But in being people of God, we can never underestimate the power of gentle, persistent, and subversive love. That is what will change the world because that is what changes us. Amen.